going on. Today we're going to talk about post process volume and more specifically how can we use post process volume and sell shaders to convert realistic assets free from the Unreal Engine marketplace into a more stylized version, cartoony, anime, um, blueprint style um, for free um, and within a number of clicks. Really easy to do. You may already be a subscriber on this channel because of a uh, workflow tutorial that I put together on how to get these anime assets from Vroid Studio into Unreal Engine. So if you're looking for that, I'll throw a link in the description below. Um, if not, uh, then stick around and we'll talk about post-process volume and stylized environment. So this guy, we've got him imported. We've got him working around. And now, you know, we want to build uh, a world around him. I've imported this um, free world off of the marketplace. Uh, I'm just going to get the name here for you. Downtown West Modular Pack. Really nice looking um, and huge uh, environment. However, it doesn't quite match, um, you know, our anime character. And this asset actually isn't part of the pack at all. I pulled it in separately, but you can see that, you know, there's a bit of a mismatch and, and maybe you're going for this style, but there's a bit of a mismatch between um, the realistic assets and, you know, the cartoony or, or anime asset that I pulled in. So I'll just show you quickly how easy it is to convert some of these pre-existing assets into a stylized um, or cartoony sort of comparison. Um, and this is just the, to kind of show you how it works and then we'll go through in detail um, step by step of, of how I did this. Um, really simple. Uh, but anyways, I'm just going to give you a look at what we've done. So if I just fire up um, Tune Instance here, here's an example. Um, so just like that, with a couple of clicks, we now have, um, you know, a, a more cartoony sort of penciled outline environment. Uh, and you can see, you know, the trees have kind of a cool cartoony look and the character just, in my opinion, uh, fits in a lot more. But there's a whole bunch of um, free cell shaders that have already been compiled and available on the marketplace. And I'll walk you through uh, a couple of them. So that's um, that's one. Uh, let's take a look at some of the other options. Uh, here's another one. Much more of a cartoony um, sort of look. Really sort of starts to kind of match. Um, this one is affecting the character. Um, so you can see he's, it's, he's kind of gone into that um, sort of shaded mode as well. There is an option, and I'll show, we'll walk through that as well, and I'll just turn it off so you get an idea. Um, there is an option to use stencils. Uh, just compile and save. And then um, when I walk around in the environment, you can see the environment is affected, um, but the character is not. So some really cool options to sort of tweak how, um, you know, your anime asset fits with these realistic um, assets. So I'll just do um, one more sort of look out into the back there and I'll turn uh, this volume off. And you can see the difference, right? So pretty drastic uh, difference. This one, um, this one isn't like super, super photorealistic. So the delta between the two isn't as strong. But you know, if you start, you know, want maybe you want to pull in some mega scan assets or some other assets, and they look really, really realistic and don't fit with your anime character. Well, you can use these filters, um, and you know, you can tweak the uh, the shaders to your liking and get a look that you want and not have to recreate um, all these assets on your own. So pretty darn cool. Um, so I guess we'll get to the tutorial portion and I'll walk you through, well, just how did we do this? Um, so the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna want to uh, go to the marketplace um, and we're gonna get a couple of things. Um, so what you can do to find these is you can put in stylized <clears throat> and then we'll put a filter on. See, there, there are some stylized um, assets out there. I mean, a lot of them are paid. Uh, if we go down to free, you'll notice there's a lot less, right? You've got some trees, you've got some of these, but they're still, for me, they're still a little bit too realistic. But this is the guy that we want. We want this shell shader, uh, shell, cell shader. Um, so just click on this, 
and um, add it to uh, the project that you're going to be working on. Um, in our case, what am I doing? Um, yeah, we're going to add it to this anime char. So let's just find that. Uh, I believe it's this one. So we're going to add this um, stylized shader. Uh, again, this is free, so that's cool. And then there's one other one that I found uh, that was pretty cool. Um, and it was called, just get the name of it. It was called, here it is, TS Post Process. Let's see if I look for that, TS Post Process. That's not the exact name. Ah, here it is, Post Process Shader Pack version one. So same thing, um, have a look for this guy. And this gives you a couple of the different examples of the cell shading styles that you can convert to. So above and beyond just cartoony, you know, maybe you're looking for some of these other type of styles. Anyways, so we are going to add, also add that to our project. Boom, just like that. They shouldn't be too big. Um, and then those should be added. And then uh, we're not gonna add just because the size is huge, and I want to make sure that this tutorial is, you know, accessible for everyone. But this this particular um, scene is like 10 gigs. So instead of adding that one, we're going to add this um, modular building set. So let's have a look at that one as well. Modular building set. Uh, building. Here we go. This guy. This guy's much smaller um, and he'll suit our needs. Again, it's free. So just make sure that you're also adding um, this guy to the same project. Okay, so we've added two cell shader packs and those are really the science. The behind this is, is the cell shading. Um, and then we've also added just this building pack just so that um, I can demo it to you um, really easily. Okay, so once you have those, um, op fire open your project. And um, in your uh, content browser, you'll want to go to the modular building set and you'll want to fire open this um, in the modular building set, this demo scene. Basically what they've done is they've constructed a scene for you with all of the individual assets. It should look something uh, similar to this. Um, once you're in there, we want to delete the existing uh, post-process volume just got some extra lighting and, and whatnot that kind of gives us a glare that I don't really like. Um, so that's just preference. And then the next thing that you're going to want to do, just going off of memory here, um, but I believe in the uh, level bl blueprint here, yeah, we've got all this, um, uh, we've got this begin play event. And just so, why not? I'll show you what I'm getting rid of. If you hit play on this level as is, it just flies you around the level and demos all the buildings and all of the different assets that exist. Pretty cool. If you want to watch that, go ahead, hit play. Um, but for what we're doing, we want the character to walk around and we want to mess around in the level. So what I'm going to do in the level blueprint is I'm just going to select those two items and hit delete. Why is it not working? Oh, froze on me. Um, there. And then we're just going to compile and save. And now we've deleted that flyby. To wait for this. Uh, we deleted the flyby by, and now if we hit play, because we imported it into uh, the project with our third person character already created, um, it's now just going to start and uh, walk. Again, if you don't have this third person character created, um, then you're going to watch want to watch my previous video that has a link in the tutorial below. And the files that we added to this project, you're going to want to add to that project so that this just works. Um, otherwise, you're probably going to be seeing the, the, the mannequin, which is also fine. It, perhaps you're not doing this for anime. You can actually see if you have the mannequin um, putting on some of these filters makes him look pretty cool too. Okay, so we've got this character. Um, he can walk around the level, but again, doesn't really match um, the style that we're going for. Um, you know, maybe, maybe you do like this, but for our purposes, uh, we're going to say, nope, we don't like this. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to uh, basically add a post-process volume. So in our place actors, um, we are going to go to volumes, and then we're going to go to 
post process volume um, and you should just drag that in and you just got a little box here and then uh, with that selected we're going to go to the details tab and then we're going to just convert a few things um, configure a few things on the post process volume itself so the first thing that we want to do is we want to um, infinite extend uh, extent unbound so basically what this is saying is that the post processing as it is out of the box the effects will only apply to this uh, whatever's within this cube if we hit this unbound it now applies to the entire level so depending on what you're doing it's kind of cool you can actually stylize a specific area or asset um, if you want to do that but for the purposes of this um, tutorial we're going to unbind it and we're going to make the post processing affect the entire level uh, the next thing that we're going to do is um, we're going to uh, change something in our project settings. Um, we're going to go here and we're going to go down to uh, rendering. And we are going to turn on, where is this? Under post processing, uh, it should be enabled by default, but we're going to change it to enabled with stencil. Uh, and I'll, I'll explain that in a little bit, um, but that'll just give us more flexibility. Essentially, um, what that allow us to do is give us some flexibility on being able to customize the entire environment, but not customize our character. And I'll, I'll explain that a little bit more in detail when we get to that. Um, okay, so that's all set up. And what else do we wanna add here? So we've got the post-process volume, we've got our character set up. I think the next thing we can do is we can just actually um, start using those two classes um, or uh, projects that we downloaded. So, um, in your project, you'll see this modular building set. That's the um, that's obviously the modular building set that we downloaded. And then you should have two other folders here. One should be advanced cell shader. Um, and then the other one uh, should be this TS post process. And so these are the two other packs that we downloaded. And essentially um, in each of them, all that they're gonna be comprised of is a bunch of different materials. So here's the master materials of the cell shader. And these are, are some of the things that we're gonna reference or that the material instances reference. Um, and then it's gonna have um, uh, a bunch of preset uh, material instances um, that we're gonna turn on and affect our post processing. So that's the uh, advanced cell shader. And then there's also the TS post process and in here, um, it must be here. Yeah, here's the uh, the, the uh, materials for all of this one. So it just it gives us, I think, six, I don't know how many total, but you know, 20, 30 some odd um, different effects that we can apply to the environment. So let's go ahead and turn on one of those effects. That's what we downloaded. Um, let's put it to use. So we're looking for. Uh, a section so again with your post process volume if you happen to click off of that click back on that and with that selected what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to look for um, under rendering features post process uh, materials and here it's going to have an array uh, that you can add to we're going to hit the little plus sign and then we're going to pick under choose we're going to pick asset reference and then there's a little drop down that comes up and it allows us to now uh, pick so we're basically done. This is what I was manipulating um, at the beginning of the video. So um, with the two assets that we downloaded, uh, if you type in CEL, it'll get all of the cell shaders. That's the advanced uh, cell shader uh, pack that we downloaded. And then the other um, uh, the other shortcut is PPM, post process materials maybe. Um, so those are the two that'll help you get to the different um, shaders that you want. And the ones that I was showing off to you, you can pick any of these, um, but the ones that I was showing off to you at the beginning of the video were these uh, tune shader instances. So you'll notice as soon as I click that, the entire environment uh, changes to a more cartoony style. So that's instant two, uh, instance one, um, looks a little bit different. You can see that. Uh, what else do we got here? You'll see these ones with custom depth. If you put those on, nothing's going to happen. That's where the stencil comes into play. So I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but let me just show you. So with that post process volume on and the character in play, you'll notice that the character actually looks a little bit different. 
And maybe you like that look. So maybe you want the post-processing to affect that character. But perhaps you don't. Um, and so how do we make it affect the environment but not the character? Uh, there's a way to do that. So that's why we turned on the uh, stenciling. So if I navigate to our character blueprint, uh, where is that? Third person blue, uh, blueprints, blueprints, here. Here's my third person character blueprint. And if I uh, am on the character and I go down to rendering, uh, is it rendering? Maybe I have to select the mesh. Yeah, you have to select the mesh here inside your character blueprint. Okay, and then we go down to uh, rendering, wherever the heck that is. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Why can I not find it? Lighting, collision, physics, clothing. Maybe it's above all this. Did I miss it? Mesh. Animation. Materials. Clothing. Physics. Oh, here. Blind. Uh, rendering. Perfect. Okay, so in rendering, um, and extending the rendering box with the little, I don't know, it looks like an eject symbol to me. Um, there's a setting in here called custom depth, and I just got to expand this. Uh, custom depth stencil right mask and render custom depth pass. So if we check this box, render custom depth pass, um, and we leave this as default, but we change the custom depth stencil value um, to anything other than zero, we're going to be able to manipulate that. So um, I think you could, this is a range from 1 to 255. I, I can't see that you would use 255, but I'm going to use one for this character. And that's just to denote that when we're doing a custom pass on the rendering, um, that uh, we look at those numbers. And so let me show you a little bit further how that works. It won't have, that won't have changed anything yet. But um, the post process that we're using right now is... If I just double check that, um, where is the material? Here, the one that we're using right now is PPM TS Tune Shader Instance 1. So if I go and look for, or I just use the magnifying glass to find that, here's the shader um, that we're using. This is a material instance, so we actually want the actual material because we're going to do um, a little bit of alteration to this. So you can see there's a <laughs> whole bunch of material code to sort of get the shader the way that it's working. This is the code that you downloaded um, off of the store. Um, what we're going to do is we're basically going to put a little bit of an, a nested if statement in here um, to manipulate this a bit. So this is basically saying, hey, use all of these material parameters um, and create this material tune shader out of this. And what we're going to do is we're going to put in a section that says, only use that under certain conditions. Um, otherwise, just don't do anything. So the first thing that we want is we want a scene texture. And um, we're going to drag out of the color. And what we're going to get is we're going to get a composition mask or a component mask. Um, and we're just going to take the green out of that. And we're going to run that into uh, an if statement. So that's our A variable um, out of our if statement. Our B variable is going to be um, a constant. So what we want to do is we want to put this as 0. So the way that this is working right now is this is actually 1. Um, scene texture, scene color. Yeah, this is actually going to be 1 because what we're going to do is we're going to um, look for the stencil shader, so custom stencil. So essentially this is saying, look for the custom stencil if it's uh, it's either going to be 0 or 1, because the default is 0, and the only object that we put a custom stencil on is 1, and that's our um, blueprint character over here. Um, when we clicked on his mesh, you can see custom depth stencil value is one. So those are only values. If you had two or three, um, you know, you, maybe you've got a bunch of assets that you're adding into this logic scheme later on. Uh, but th that's basically what's happening here. And so we want to say that if these are equal, 
Um, if they're equal, that means that they're both zero, and that means we want this um, we want this uh, material to do its thing. But if they're not equal, so if it's uh, less than or greater than, um, then we don't want it to do anything at all. Um, so this is the this is the logic. This is the initial um, change that they have on the cell shader, and so now we want to create our constant. So if we do that, we can do another scene texture. Uh, scene texture, yes, scene texture. And in this one, instead of scene color, what we're going to do is we're going to say post processing input zero. And essentially, that's your default um, no post processing at all. And so again, we want to run this into a mask component. Boom, just like that. And we want to select R, G, and B. And then this is going to be, that's the value that we want to pass when A and B are not equal to each other. Otherwise, we want to pass the pre-existing um, scenario. And then, you know, based on whichever one it finds to be true, it'll pass that out to our actual material. And so now we've set it up to basically say, if you find a one on an asset, don't apply the post-processing volume. A um, little bit complicated, but I think if you get it, you get it. It's not it's not too, too bad. Okay, so now you'll notice that if I run this, um, the character doesn't have any uh, post-processing on them. So now we've uh, post-processed the uh, background and we've left our character as is. So you decide, um, you know, maybe you, you want your character post-processed with this as well. Um, but for now, um, that's the change we made. So but we only made that change to the tune shader. So any material instance that uses the tune shader, we're good. But um, if it doesn't use the tune shader, then you're going to have to create that nested statement in that uh, material again. So imagine um, you know, you're on instance two. Uh, you like the look of that, but maybe it's too strong. So here's you, you also have uh, a slider here where you can adjust the post process volume setting from zero to one. Zero is off, one is on. Um, and so you're able to customize how much you want to apply that. Um, there is a specific shader in here called Wind uh, Walker. And if you're familiar with the latest Zelda, um, do, do, do cell, and then where's Wind Walker? There. Um, you can see it, it kind of matches um, that style. Um, but just like I was showing you, you can turn it on slightly and sort of adjust. So maybe you don't like the, you know, the complete yellow color and you want to just bring that down to 0.8 and you like that look a little bit better, right? And if you ran your guy now, again, right, we didn't, we only did the post-process removal for that one material and you'll have to apply it to every um, master material that you want it to take effect. So he does look a little bit wonky. Um, but we could simply go and copy some of that code and, and do the same thing on, on this particular shader as well. Um, but anyways, um, you can see, so there's, there's an opportunity. The other thing that you can do is you can combine, because it's an array, you can combine um, multiple cell shaders. So there's another cool one in here. Um, I think it's called uh, Pencil. Yeah, cell shader colored pencil. Um, so let's just turn this one all the way off. And look, it's like this cool, uh, really almost monotone. It's got some color peeking, peeking through, um, sort of grayscale pencil drawn uh, type. So again, our, our character isn't it being ignored by the post-processing, um, but we could. We can go and we can add that same code that I showed you before to um, that asset and uh, remove it out. But what I was going to show you is that um, you can combine the two of these and potentially get a different look, right? So if I turned up the Wind Walker um, shading and, you know, left some of the colored pencil on, here's it off, and here's it on, you can kind of get a, a neat combined look that way. So you can kind of mix and match these and, you know, play with their um, their strength to see you know, get a different look. So 
because um, this initially started with anime assets, um, I do want to show you this one uh, filter that's on here. Um, cell shader filter. I don't know what to call it. Um, anyways, I'll show you this one filter. There is an anime one uh, in the advanced shader pack. Uh, why is that not coming up? Anime. There is one specific for anime. Yeah, here it is. Um, and I'll just call out two. Some of these you're going to have the, the actual material. Um, and some of them you're going to have the material instance. You always want the material instance. Um, and it, it just takes less uh, resources and memory uh, to run it that way instead of picking the actual material. So make sure you're taking the material instance if it's available and um, you know create one if, if there isn't one. So anyways, uh, here's the anime uh, filter that they have as well. Um, so you can take a look at how that looks um, and potentially that's a look that you're going for. For me, it's a little bit yellow. I mean, I would play with it. Um, you know, you can adjust, you can adjust the lighting uh, a bit too, depending on what you're trying to do. Um, you know, maybe that'll affect things. Uh, there we go. Um, yeah, you can adjust the lighting. You can also uh, tone down on the post process um, on the actual material. You can tone down. Uh, the setting as well. Why can't I find this uh, here? Uh, we can turn down the anime a little bit, and then I find it's um, a little less yellow. Um, and then you know you can play around uh, how you want this. Um, again, the post processing right now is affecting the character, so it, it all looks a little washed out. Um, if we wanted to apply some of the effects that I showed you earlier of eliminating the character, I, I think it um, looks a little better. So here's another quick look at um, another use case, um, just another sort of mini level I was throwing together uh, with a 2D side scroller. Um, you can see how some of these effects can um, change the look of things. I really like like that sort of cross hatched sort of pencil shading mark um, as you get close to some of the objects. Um, you can see on some of these ledges and edges and things, it looks kind of cool. Um, just like I showed you before, I left the character um, out of it. I'll just show you what the mannequin looks like with the settings turned off. Rendering. That back to zero there he looks kind of cool with um with that shading on too so that's something you can do it's kind of neat um yeah i like the the background actually even with the checker mark trees look kind of cool with the outline um and then if we shut um if we shut everything off let's just have a look here where's this do, do set these both to zero um, and you can see what it looks like normally so some pretty cool um, effects you can you can get uh, by messing around with this stuff a little bit there's that anime filter again this gives you a different environment to have a different look and feel yeah I, I mean the rest of it is really just you know, using what I showed you uh, to play around and do some things. There were some other cool ones. Um, PPM, I think there was like a blueprint uh, material. Where's that one? Blue. Yeah, fake lighting blueprint gives you another kind of interesting look that you might be looking for. You know, um, if you leave the post processing on for the character, um, you can get some, oh, that one's got the background in there, but you can get some cool effects, like maybe you're doing a dream world or something like that with some of these characters. Um, you can set it to turn these on uh, with a button. So maybe I'll show you uh, that as well, right? Is um, Why don't I show you? Yeah, why don't I show you with this world? Um, so we'll run through the logic that we just did in the material. So in this case, we're using uh, PPM, fake lighting blueprint. So let's find that on here. You can see if I hover over, it's a material instance. So um, uh, 
it's not the master material. So we want to uh, double click in that and then look for the master material with the magnifying glass. And so here's our master material. And just like we did before, this is all of the logic that's going into the emissive color right now. We want to just drop in that um, if statement. So we want to create a scene texture, scene texture. We want that to be a component mask. And we want just the red for this to be our A. And we're going to run that in. Um, and then this is going to be our uh, custom stencil. Uh, so that's the main object. And then we're going to create another scene texture. Where is it? Where are you? Okay. This one is going to be our, um, oh, we need our constant here too. So our B is our constant, constant, just a zero value. Perfect. So that's comparing this value to zero. So it's, again, it's either going to be zero or one. So that's your options. And then this is going to be your default scene. So we change this value to uh, post-process input zero. We want to run this into a mask. In this case, though, we want, uh, sorry, a mask component or a component mask. I always get that backwards. Component mask, we want to make sure that all RGB settings are on this because it's our, um, uh, our unaltered state. And then this is going to be, so if these are equal together, then we are going to want to run our existing code as post-process. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it needs to be like this. Let's just do it. I can't wrap my head around it right now. Okay. Uh, boom. I'm pretty sure that's right. And then there, we run that in. So yeah, the way that's working is if the values are equal, right? So that would mean it's a zero and a zero. Um, then we want to run our existing code. If not, then we want to just make sure it does nothing there. Perfect. We did it. So you want to save and apply that, or you can just hit save and it'll do it all for you. And then now when we run, it'll have our uh, character excluded, which is awesome. Um, but what I wanted to show you is that you could now, if you wanted to manipulate that on a button press. So, you know, and, and you could do it for the entire uh, level or you could just do it for your character. So I'm just gonna show you for the character. Um, you know, maybe there's things where, that where you want to manipulate this if a character, you know, eats a magic mushroom and the environment goes crazy or whatnot. But I mean, you know, you can get creative and uh, there's lots of purposes for this. Um, so let's just show you uh, blueprints in the character, uh, characters, um, event graph. What do we want to do? Here, let's do this. We'll go into um, the project settings. We'll go into input. And what we'll do is we will put an action mapping. So right now we've got jump and reset VR, I guess. Uh, let's add another one. Uh, we'll call this, um, uh, what's a good name for this? Uh, post process. It's not a good name. I mean, it's, I don't have a good name because I don't know what your intended purpose is for it, but um, all I'm going to do is just hit this. You know, you can pick an, a key on your keyboard. I'm just going to hit the top key on my um, joystick there, and then that's just setting the input. So what we'll do is um, we'll go back to the character blueprint, and then in here we'll now put in post process action event. So that's on that button press. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to manipulate um, the value that I had set over here, right? So on here, if you recall earlier in the tutorial, we set the, where's the render? We set this um, custom depth, depth stencil value to one. So we can change this to zero one. And so uh, zero one all the way up to 255. So again, if you had a bunch of different uh, custom stencils that you wanted 
um, to show different things to happen. You can manipulate it here and in the material um, blueprint. But anyways, we're just going to change this from zero, uh, from one back to zero. So um, let's just go over here and we are going to say, we'll bring in the character mesh. Uh, and then we're going to say, what's the name of that? Back here, sorry. What is the name of it? It is called custom depth stencil value. So that's what we want to manipulate is custom depth stencil value. Uh, custom depth stencil value on the mesh. Here you go. Set that. Oh, I re brought in the mesh. We don't need that. Hey, custom depth stencil value. There we go. Now it worked. I don't know why, what it was doing there. Okay. Uh, yeah, we want to drag that into pressed and the value. Yeah, it's currently set to one. So we want it to set it to zero. And then when it's released, um, we want to do the same thing. So we'll just uh, make the target the same mesh and then we'll change this value to one. Um, so there you go. So when the key's pressed, it'll be zero. And when it's not pressed, it'll be one. So let's just have a look and see what happens. So he's like that. I press the key and then um, he gets affected, right? So this one, it's only turning him to, uh, you can see, I can just press it. And I mean, you know, you can get creative there and decide what you want to do, but um, you can see, I can just turn it on, on and off by pressing it. This one's less exciting because he's just turning gray. Um, but you know, the one with the pencil mark or, or some of the other ones, um, you know, you can do some pretty cool things with. So I think that's uh, I think that's it. That's the extent of it. Um, you've now got the ability. Um, I showed you on the character mesh how to manipulate that. The other thing that you could do is you could manipulate it per asset. So for every single um, every single asset, like this bench here, um, or this yeah here this awning, um, you could go in and you could um, mess around with this too, right? So within the rendering settings, hitting the little eject button, if you uh, turned on the custom depth pass and you turn this to one boom so you you can now um, manipulate different objects so it really I think it becomes useful if you want to use multiple different filters in different areas or um, you know maybe on some objects you want to combine it or maybe it looks great on 99% of objects but you know there's a few objects that you want to uh, customize the look. So that's how you would do that. So some pretty cool stuff. Uh, I think it just takes your um, use case for the anime uh, character just a little bit further, um, gives you some options. And, you know, for people that aren't doing anime or cartoon, just this is good for, you know, um, just learning. And, you know, maybe you want to use this um, in, in your game for creating different environments, dream worlds and, and things like that. So some really cool uh, use cases. The other thing to keep in mind is we downloaded all of these assets for free off of the marketplace. Um, you could create your own assets. Um, there's definitely a number of tutorials out there on how to create cell shaders. So I would just go on YouTube and look up, you know, Unreal Engine cell shading. There's, there's actually um, some videos right from Unreal Engine um, that I had watched. You could go in and you could manipulate these materials further. So in the master materials or the material instances you could play around um you know you could understand what's happening in each section here and play with um the individual pieces of it to um you know change the look a little bit like you can see this one um you know on its own without the material instances this is what it looks like but you know you could customize and, and change some of these and backwards engineer some of the stuff to change the style um and uh play with with uh to your heart's content so that's it i hope you uh like this i hope this was helpful i um i really appreciate you guys i appreciate those that have already subscribed and you know if uh you found value in this uh please throw me a like and a subscribe and i will keep doing stuff like this as it comes up and i find more interesting things to share with you guys cool so we'll see you around